welcome back to Autism Live. We're really excited. For the first time on the show, we're welcome, welcoming David Scribner. Uh, David, am I saying your last name right? Yep, that's me, David Scribner. Okay. And David, tell us, we've got a really fun picture of you with your uh, thumbs up because we weren't able to get a picture uh, today. But um, thrilled that you're here with us. Tell us what your role is at the Center for Autism and Related Disorders. I am a senior clinical lead manager. Um, so I'm in charge of running three offices. I'm currently running our uh, Santa Ana office, our Irvine North office, and our Anaheim office uh, all in California. Wonderful, wonderful, and I know you're doing a great job doing that. So David is going to be answering some questions that you guys sent in for us. This is the segment that we call Ask an Autism Expert. And so David, I'm going to launch right in. Um, somebody said, thank you for the show. My son covers his uh, ears when he hears loud noises and when he's doing something bad and I'm redirecting, redirecting him. When I call him, he covers his ears. What should I do? Please help. Yeah, um, I think that's a pretty pretty common thing that we kind of see with some of our earlier learners and our, our younger clients. Um, I would look at this in two parts. Um, for the covering his ears when he hears loud noises, uh, the first thing I would want to do is make sure that we ruled out any kind of biomedical issues. Um, I'd have him go in, get his hearing tested, and make sure that there isn't anything going on there. Um, once that was ruled out, then we have a little bit more of a direction that we can go to. Um, we can also look into maybe seeing if he needs to have an occupational therapy referral to see if there's some sort of sensory issue there that they might be able to kind of handle and take a look at. Um, and once we got that ruled out, the thing I would start looking at is the behavioral aspect of it. Uh, I think it's pretty telling that he's covering his ears when you're redirecting him. Um, I would continue to follow through with that redirection. Uh, you don't find him to escape redirection just because he's able to block you out. Um, and so we might need to do some other redirections rather than verbal redirections. Um, Can you give us like an example of what a verbal redirection would be, David? Yeah, so um, do, we, do we have an idea of what the behavior is that they're redirecting? I don't. I don't actually no, know okay. that. <clears throat> no, that's okay. So, I mean, it, it, so I, I'm going to use some examples then. So if we had a, um, if, if we had a client that was maybe laying down or playing with a toy inappropriately, um, getting some visual stimulation from it or something like that, um, and we had identified that as a behavior that we wanted to redirect, um, a verbal redirection could be something like play nicely, sit up straight, um, something along the lines of that, where you're, where you're giving some sort of a verbal command to do something different than what that behavior is at the, at the moment. Yeah. Um, so I think, I mean, it's a pretty, it makes, it's a pretty good strategy to just block that out, right? If you're, if you're, if you're the, if you're yeah. the kid. Um, if I can't hear you, I can't do it. So. Well, it's a, it's a equivalent to when we see on, uh, you know, sitcoms and movies when somebody puts their fingers in their ears, when somebody's saying something they don't want to hear and going la, 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 la. It's, you know, I, you know, if I... <laughs> I don't really want to hear criticism either, and if I could cover my ears and not hear it, it would be a very uh, adolescent uh, thing to do, but if it worked, why wouldn't an adolescent do it? Exactly. So, and, that, and, that's, and that's, the big, that's the big takeaway there, is that we just have to make sure that that doesn't work anymore. So if our end goal is to redirect them away from that behavior, uh, we just need to ramp up and use a different redirection, whether it's, uh, you know, we... If they're playing with the toy inappropriately, we take that toy away until that they're playing with it appropriately, and then they can have it back. Um, if it's something that they're doing with their hands, directing their hand back down to their lap or something, something along those lines, um, and just figuring out something that we can do to get that behavior to stop without allowing our our, our child or our client to keep doing those things. Uh, now the other what? thing, though. What I just got that you said, I just had like an epiphany because a lot of times as a parent, 
we like they'll be doing something that we don't want them to do so we verbally try to redirect them and 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 in the case of the child covering the ears or, or child who just doesn't do it what it turns into in that moment i just realized this is that as a parent we then become affronted that they're not listening to us and we become the thing that becomes most important is the redirection instead of the fact that we were trying to get them to stop a behavior and in doing that the kids got away with it I just got that, David. You just made my light bulbs light up. But what we need to focus on is that we're trying to stop the behavior, not necessarily listen to the redirection. I, I had an aha moment. Thank you. I'm sorry. Yeah. No, that's, that's exactly it, too. I mean, I'm, I'm assuming that we're talking about an automatically reinforced behavior, and I think it's really easy to really miss what automatic means. Automatic reinforcement means that if you do it, it is reinforced. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that, 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 that is the that is the big takeaway. Okay. Um, I did want to mention something else about this one too, real quick. Yeah. Um, um, the the caller also had mentioned that they would constantly plug their ears anytime they said their name as well. Yes. Um, this this will, this will happen a lot when we're teaching certain skills. Um. And we want to be really careful when we're teaching things like responding to name and eye contact and stuff like that, that we're pairing it with something really fun and reinforcing because kids do a really good job of learning that we use their name when we want something from them. And so they get really, really used to that. Um, and so a good way to, you know, a really successful way for them to ignore or get out of doing work is to ignore their name when it's said. Um, so initially what we want to do when we're teaching these things is to pair that with a lot of reinforcement. So we say their name, they look at us, and then we give them tickles, we give them high fives, we give them something that they really want. And then they kind of learn, oh, my name doesn't always necessarily mean I have to do work. I can mean good stuff, too. Got it. What an important point. And then we can fade into doing more work. I, so make sure that you know, just saying their name isn't always something that precedes something that it's hard or difficult or not necessarily reinforcing to make sure that when we say their name and they respond that we're reinforcing them. I love that. Thank you.